Hey, next we have Ronan Gray doing the epitome of hyperbole. Brian Regan. Okay. Okay, um, I'm just say, when you're sitting down the plane, you know, back there, you're reading your books, newspapers, and then the captain comes on the loudspeaker. Ah, folks, let me tell you what's going on up here. Uh, has that ever led into anything remotely good? Like, it's never this. It's never, ah, folks, let me tell you what's going on up here. It seems we found a big bag of money on board, and the tower has instructed us to divvy it amongst you passengers. The problem is, the individual stacks keep getting so high they keep toppling over, and the rubber bands we've been using keep snapping on the sides. We're sorry for the delay. No, it's never that. It's always, uh, somebody been arranging upside down, and there's only one tool in our galaxy that can fix this, and it's in Madagascar. The towers instructed us to move the plane to a holding area until everybody on board has died a natural death. Well, yeah, about that. I don't know who's writing kids' books these days, but I want a piece of that financial pie. <laughs> I put my little sister on my lap with a big cardboard book, The Clock. The Big Clock. Tick tock. The end. Well, box. And they have a summary on the back that's bigger than the actual story. Like, put your child on your lap and delight in hearing about the stories of the ticking clock. Sometimes it goes tick and sometimes it goes talk. Which just goes to show you that when something is about to happen one way, it may happen the other. What? Are you really talking about this book? Man, I must have missed the subtext or something. Okay, yeah, I, I, I like space stuff. But I hate how they're always looking for intelligent life. Like, finding any life at all wouldn't freak us out totally. Like, step off the lander. You turn around, there's a bunch of... We're from Earth. We're looking for intelligent life. Two plus two equals chicken! That's a negative, Houston.